All right. You know, I have seen many people at the fitness gym. I go to the YMCA, and they're just working their hearts out, trying to get stronger, more fit. And they'll be doing an exercise like triceps, and they're doing them completely wrong. They're not even working their triceps. And I want to go over and say, excuse me, but... I could help you on this exercise, but I don't because I don't feel it's appropriate. But this video, we're going to address it and fix things and let you know what you're doing wrong without any apology. Mike, do you have anything to say? And we're going to do it with the help of Dr. Christy Ennis, who is a physical therapist as well. So she's going to be showing you four exercises people commonly do wrong and how to correct it, and we'll be showing you six. Which is going to be a real pleasure to your eyes because Mike and I, you know, we're not much to look at so <laughs> and, she, and she's you know she's a doctor of physical therapy she's you're going to get some expert information i don't know i have a big bald red head right now it's yeah, something to look at you gotta put a hat on mike it's summertime to pay let's get on with the movie So the first exercise is tricep extensions. Now I am extending my triceps technically when I'm straightening my elbow. However, gravity is not very much involved because it's pulling this way. This actually is more of a shoulder workout, just holding it here. So Brad's gonna show a different way you can do it using a band. Right, so Mike is out here. The weight is pulling down. The resistance is all vertical and down, which again is not working the tricep. If you want to do this exercise standing, you're going to need the resistance at a horizontal plane, uh, which you're going to need resistance bands. I will show you here. And this works the triceps here. Elbow needs to be stationary and work it like this. You know, we're not doing this kind of a thing. So this is a good option for tricep exercise if you want to do it standing, going horizontal. Notice how this part of his arm is staying in a nice straight line, really working on that tricep muscle That's there. It's a good option. Mike, we got an option if they want to use a dumbbell. So if you only have a dumbbell, you can do a tricep kickback. It's called lean onto something that's taller. You can stagger your stance a little bit. Same thing. You're just going to extend your tricep and then go back down. This is a little more against gravity because you see when it's up, my tricep is fully extended Ooh, this wow. way. So it engages it a lot more. Mm -hmm. So this is an option if you have dumbbells. And we should say with Brad's, if you go to the gym, a cable machine could work too if there's no bands. That's right. A core exercise working both the abdominals and that low back is the bird dog. So this one starts off on hands and knees. And this, again, right from the setup is where I usually see people go wrong. So they oftentimes will have their hands way too far forward. So now I'm almost going into a child's pose or even sometimes too far underneath of them. We really want to have things stacked. So our shoulders are right over our wrists and you want to make sure you're not just jamming down into those hands. So even cupping your hands a little bit. So that's step one. Step two is making sure you actually have a flat back. So before people even start their movement, I'll often see people with an arched back or they're shifted or rotated off to one side. Again, that just puts strain on things that really don't need it and don't work the things that need to be worked. So you can always think about a little gentle belly button pull in, but you don't have to do that. Now, the exercise is opposite arm and leg extending. So remember what I just said about all of that position in through the spine. So when we're still talking about the spine, what I usually see is an arch in the spine and then typically a rotation kind of away from that leg because it's harder to use those glute muscles, right? So if we really want things to activate in the right way, you want to think about squeezing to those buns to help keep that spine nice and level, both directions, up and down and side to side. So a little squeeze through the belly button, little squeeze through those glutes, and then you can even turn that thumb up to help protect the shoulder a little bit. But notice I am not lifting real high. So that's the other issue that I tend to see is that people think they really need to lift high. And then even if they were able to keep their spine in a happy position before, if you're lifting too much, you're going to arch through that spine. And then those glutes probably aren't going to work the same way either because they're trying to keep you on balance. So I'll show you the other side too, same idea. And sometimes I'll even have people start out just with that leg mo motion <laughs> movement because adding two points 
is a lot harder than just starting with this one. So you want to get this one down first, and then you can go ahead and try getting that opposite arm and leg. One last thing that I see people try to do, and it is really hard, which is why I don't often give it, and I'm going to show you how bad I am at it, is people trying to do that same side. And I'm laughing because clearly I am not staying level. So please try to make sure you start out opposite because it's a lot easier on the body to get that one right. Okay, the next exercise is some sort of dumbbell chest press in a standing or seated position. This kind of looks similar to the tricep extension, but engages your pec muscles more. However, again, we're not fighting against gravity, so you're not doing much besides working the front of your shoulder muscles again. Right, the pectoralis major muscles are doing very little there. The weight's going down. You might as well just not do it unless you want to get your anterior deltoid muscles working which uh, there's options for that. We're gonna show you how you can do this standing. Again, you're gonna need bands. Uh, I'll show you two options for it. Uh, if you have bands, you're gonna get an, a door anchor that you put into the door like this so you have a nice anchor because you're going to need it at about chest level. You can move that anywhere up and down on the door. Make sure your door is closed tight. All right, so in this position, now the resistance is horizontal just like before and good posture, good base with your feet and we're going to push out. I'm pretty close to the camera, wow. <laughs> now, if you really want to emphasize the fibers of the pectoralis majors, you do flies. And this is what I like to do, because I do push-ups. This does a similar thing. This is very specific to those pecs. Works real well. Now, if you, uh, I do want to show you these work okay. If you really want to have a good system, because you use them a lot, let's go over here. We have the wall anchors here. They bolt into any wall that has a wooden stud and you get four of these if you get them at Bob and Brad. You get three on Amazon, but we're going to use the middle one. You'll have a low one, one here and one there, and I use them all and, so, and you will. And again, this just works really nice because you go on and off at any level you want. As a matter of fact, we could go down here and work the upper fibers of the chest like this, or up like this, and get a different workout. But otherwise, we would go from this level. All right. So if you only have dumbbells and no bands, you can definitely do these, but you need to lay on the floor. Now, if I'm laying on the floor and doing a normal press, I'm getting a little bit of pec, but I'm getting a lot of tricep because I have to stop here. If you happen to have a bench or you're at a gym, you can easily go down and activate that chest muscles. So if you are at home just laying on the floor, you could do the fly like Brad was showing, but just do them on the floor and work those pecs this way. You could do this on the bed as well. Um, ideally, the bench is, is great, but you know this will be a good option. Yes, and on to the next one. All right. Clamshell is fantastic for working those side butt muscles, but, haha, pun intended, what I see people go wrong is right in the startup, actually. So the correct form would be lying directly on your side, so really right on that hip, and a lot of times I'll see the people rolled backwards, so that's step one to correct. If it's uncomfortable, just put a little extra padding there, whether it's another mat, do this on the bed, or even stick a uh, pillow or a little blanket there. So let's correct out of that, go right back onto our side. Second thing I see go wrong with this is that people just kind of collapse their body down. So I always tell people, think of your most yummiest cupcake you can think of, Make sure you stick it right under there and you don't want to smoosh that cupcake because then it's not as pretty anymore. So you want to have that side lifted up a little bit. Third piece is that most people or a lot of people will have their legs way too far forward. And then we're going to end up using our hip flexors a heck of a lot more than those side butt muscles, which is what we're trying to work. Not here, but here. So if you take both legs straight and you look down, we're all the way rolled on our side. You should be able to see your toes, your feet, maybe a little bit of your leg. But if you see, if I bring my legs forward, now I can see my whole leg and I know that I'm not in the right position. You can always have someone look at you to make sure you're in a straight line here as well. And then from here, people sometimes will get this position totally perfect. And then when I ask them to bend their knees, they do this, right? So now we've just lost that position. So really try to stay in that nice straight line. Now bend those knees without moving your hips. The feet will stay glued together 
and you lift that top knee up. Now again, just like when we were getting into that position where I see people go wrong here is that they try to get a little bit more motion by rolling backwards. Now we're not really activating those muscles anymore and you're just causing a twist in that spine which again can put some pressure on the spine and it's not getting those muscles to target the way we want to. So it's okay if it's even just a tiny little small motion, you should feel that right there. All right, the next one is the shoulder press. Now there's a lot of different ways people do this, a lot of wrong ways. It can actually injure and cause impingement problems and give you shoulder pain. A common way, now I've got a booyah stick, but this is to represent a barbell with some weights. And people will put it behind their head, and yeah, that position does give you good posture, but the tendency is people put their head forward and they'll start doing them, and the shoulder's actually at an end range going backwards, which puts the shoulder at a really poor mechanical position for doing this exercise, particularly with weight. So we've got stress on the shoulder joint and with the neck forward, it is gonna cause, or has potential to cause some real neck problems. Uh, so we wanna avoid that one altogether. If you are going to do it with the dumbbell, wanna put it in front here. And I personally would do this one in a seated position or a bench going back if you have that, which at home oftentimes you don't. Mike, if you have a dumbbell, that's where probably more people at home will be using. Yeah, so if you're straight out way back here to 90 degree angle, it's a little more awkward and causes more impingement. And I can feel that in my shoulders. It doesn't feel as good. So and you're young. I am. You typically want to get, <laughs> like Brad was doing, more in front of your body like this. It engages your chest and you kind of round up. I'm not sitting on a proper form right now, obviously, in this bench sideways. But you want to push up more like this, not have your shoulders way back here. However, some people can't lift their arms up. And if you do this wrong for a prolonged period of time, you're probably going to have an injury. So there is a good alternative. That's right. And this is where therapists uh, usually... Uh, always, I just say always, oftentimes we'll go to the bands and we're going to actually work those shoulder muscles, par particularly the deltoids, in a real safe manner. We're going to go out to the side, the resistance coming horizontally, and we're not going to go past 90 degrees for sure. And to be safe, we're going to keep it down just below 90 at about 70. That minimizes any risk for impingement or irritating that supraspinatus tendon, which is the most commonly injured uh, rotator cuff muscle. How was that, Bob? <laughs> That's not a mouthful. So the nice thing about bands, if you're using it on the door, you put it down here like this. You can go one like this. Start out low. This is not, these are not real big muscle groups at this type of uh, arrangement. The mechanical forces are because of the lever arm is, is quite uh, aggressive. Especially, and if it's not enough, you can just double up two if you have large hands. Oh, that's too much for me. Back to here, 10 to 15 repetitions. Now I'm going to show you an option. If you uh, want to go to something a little bit better, we're going to use the wall anchor, which I used before. I'm going to pull it off of there and go down below to the low wall anchor. Slips in there in a matter of seconds. There we go. Now this is red. It's a little bit stronger, so I'm going to actually go in a little bit and definitely only use one and do my 10 to 15 reps out this way. If you have any pain in your shoulder with doing these exercises, there may be a problem already existing and that's something you want to avoid then. Again, if you do not have bands and you only have dumbbells, you can certainly do the lateral raises in a standing position as well. Oh. Simply go out to the side at roughly 70 degrees and then back down. Don't shrug. I see a lot of people, if the weight gets heavy, they go like this. Yeah. Don't bend your arms. Keep your arms straight the whole time, as straight as you can. Go up, hold it for a second, control it back down. If the weight feels light for you, hold it here for like two seconds and then go back down slow and it will feel heavy. Right. The whole thing of mechanics, how you do these with where your position is, is vital. As well as Mike's doing an excellent job of slow, controlled motion versus this type of thing where you're you using body we, uh, <laughs> compensations. We call it cheating. <laughs> so anyways, let's go on to the next one. To work the chest and the triceps and the shoulders, the push-up is a common one people head to. And it's a good one, but another one that often tends to have some issues with it. So if we're starting out in a full push-up, 
with our legs straight and our knees off the ground, usually where I see people start off incorrectly is that they've got an arch right in their back. So to fix that, right, think about, woo, pull up on that belly button. But sometimes that one is just too difficult to do to start, and that's okay. If you drop down to your knees, you'll immediately find that one is easier to hold. The higher up you go too, in other words, if you were to try to do this on a coffee table or on a counter or even on the wall, the easier it will be. So those are some good options to try as well. So if you are, whether you're on your toes or on your knees, oftentimes when people then go to right to push down, I'll see this, right? Just that small little motion, which works something thankfully, but not as much as you can. So again, oftentimes that means let's make that position a little bit easier so that you can really get your body all the way down. Okay. Notice as I did that, hopefully my elbows were going straight back. Oftentimes I'll see people with those elbows right out to the side and boy, oh boy, does that not feel good on my shoulder and my shoulders are doing okay right now. Okay. So elbows straight back, not out to the side. If you do have shoulder problem, I have lots of problems, right? If you do have shoulder problems, if you turn those hands out a little bit, so rotating into the shoulder even, sometimes that makes it a little bit more comfortable. Now, lastly, what I tend to see is people want to look down at what they're doing. So then they no longer have a happy neck position. So if you think about not looking straight ahead, but at a little bit of an angle, you'll keep that neck in a nice happy spot as well. All right, the next one is squats. Excellent exercise for the thighs and the, the glutes and the hips. Couple of problems, the two biggest things that we see is problems with the knees and the back. I'll show you the knees first. Let's say I'm doing a squat down and I'm going back up. This is what oftentimes happens. People's knees tend to see to go in like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit sometimes, and not always, and back up. That really stresses the knee joint and the ligaments. We do not want to do that. The knee should stay over the toes. You may have to rotate your feet out a little bit if you're retroverted in the hip like I am. This is much more comfortable and it works out well. Knees are over the toes. This is not happening. The next thing is rounding the back and stressing the spine. Mike's going to demonstrate. So I'm just doing a chair squat because some people maybe feel unsafe without something there to sit on. So you mean you're squatting with the chair? There, I'm squatting on the chair. You so can the, use a toilet too. <laughs> <laughs> so the chair is there so you know how far to go down. And if you lose your balance, you'll sit and not fall. Yes, obviously, if you've been squatting before, you don't need this. But for new beginners, it's a good option. So a lot of people may round their back as they're squatting, Here. looking down like this. Let's look at a straight back. Oops, sorry, Straight Mike. back. Sh show them. There we got a good back. We're touching here. We're touching here. We're touching here. Now, if you have poor form and you round your back, you know, this is a good model that that's rounding and that's stressing the spine and the low mid back and low back it's just not the way to do it yeah you're basically completely disengaging your core when you do it that there way. you go so it's good to have nice proper form again you don't have to use weights if you're a beginner you can use dumbbells barbell whatever you're comfortable with but it's important to get the functional pattern of the squat down before anything else right and you're going to find out particularly if you're a beginner or you're older this may be all you need for resistance, and it'll really give you a nice burn in those quads and strengthen well. Okay, I wanted to show two more options. If you feel very comfortable, you've squatted before, and you don't need the chair, your balance is very stable. Uh, if you have, well, we use a booyah stick or anything, four or five feet long like a stick, and you want to guarantee your form is good, this is something that Bob and I have been promoting for 10 years, I think, on our show. Put it behind your back, it touches. Yeah, go ahead and show them, show them the, the points on me. So you got the low back buttock area, you got the mid traps here, and you should have the back of the head yeah. as well so you don't have a forward neck posture, three points of contact. All right, and simply feet out wide, adjust your feet so that it's comfortable to squat. And what I do is sometimes I'll slide the pole down and I can feel it touch the ground, then I know how far I went the time before. It's just a neat little option. The other thing I've been doing in the last year is I really like to put it here and it stretches my chest and I make sure my head is back and I really get nice form and a good stretch in my upper body and then I perform my squats like this. Chin tucked in. Uh, all right, that was kind of fun. 
The bridge is an awesome way to activate the glutes, but there are a lot of things that I see done incorrectly with this one. So number one is having those feet too close together. So you really do want them to be about hip width to even a little further apart there. And then once they are set in that position, oftentimes I will see people collapse their knees in. We don't want to do that either. You want to keep your knees pointed nice and straight ahead. From here, you can do a little pelvic tilt if it feels okay. If it doesn't, that's okay not to do that too. But what you don't want to do is arch right from the get-go. Okay, so I'm going to do that little pelvic tilt. I'm going to lift my butt right up and I can already feel those glutes engaging. But this is where I'm stopping. If I go any further than this, I'm going to start to arch either in through that low back or through the rib cage. And it kind of looks like this. And if you do this, you'll probably feel the strain right in your low back or if not in the low back, then right in the neck. So let's go through one right from the setup in a nice proper way. So feet about excuse me, hip width apart, knees pointing straight forward. You could keep those hands down by your side. Of course you're breathing. Little tuck in the pelvis and I'm shifting my hips up until I can lift as high as I can without arching any part of that spine. And then lastly, when you come back down nice and controlled, don't let yourself just thump and collapse. And then you come right back into that position. All right, now this exercise is very popular. We're talking about core, the crunch. This is, goes back 40, 50, 100, 200 years, like Bob and I. Uh, we're gonna show you some typical wrong ways to do the crunch that stress the back particularly, as well as the neck. Now, if you're our age, Bob and I, 60 plus, this is how we were taught how to do core exercises, crunches, if you will. Uh, Arms all the way back. Oh, all the way all back. All the way back. Yeah, yeah, you weren't good in gym class, and yes, you could do that. Touch your toes. Now, <clears throat> the problem, how are you feeling, Mike? I'm not flexible. My hamstrings for this. <laughs> so right here, the back is rounded. The head is forward. There's all kinds of stress on the back. It is working the core, but it's certainly nothing we recommend anymore. So a variation of someone perhaps my age when I was in gym class, you had the bent knees, you put the hands behind your head, and then you flex forward like this, rounding your upper back and your neck, just like the other way we were showing earlier, which can cause some back pain as you age. And oftentimes I have people actually can do this, and they pull their head up, thinking that if they pull their head, it's going to help them pull their whole body up, and uh, really stresses that low neck, really drives me crazy when I say, I actually need to go up and say to people, don't do that. I haven't yet, but I will someday. I often see people at the gym on the ab bench like this, and they'll do about this much motion, and that's it, and they look kind of funny. So that's not right either. <laughs> That's all rounded back. Let's go through some proper ways to do it. So if you're laying, it's important to have some bent knees like this and keep your back flat. If you're not sure what that means, put the, your hands in the small of your back here and push into it. Then I'm engaging my core. Once you've figured that out, what you want to do is you can crunch up like this. My shoulders come off, but you see I don't have a forward neck position and I'm not having a rounded spine. It's all straight. This is working my ab muscles. It's doing just fine. That's what this exercise is supposed to do, strengthen your core. Am I forgetting anything? No. Well, I've got a couple options. but Another option is to put your hands behind your head like this. If you have the shoulder range of motion, again, same concept, flexing at the core like this, trying to keep a straight back, just slightly lifting the shoulder blades off the mat here. Now Brad's version he was showing me is to use a towel if you can't get your arms back here due to shoulder range of motion, so you can put it behind your neck. This is what you do. It's one of them, yep. I've been, I've been experimenting. Hopefully my mic doesn't get messed up like this. But you pull like this, and then you do the same thing, but you have support from the towel instead of your hands behind your head. The biggest thing is look at Mike's chin. He keeps it in neutral position. That puts his neck in a neutral position, as opposed to looking this way and flexing the neck. Show them the wrong way, Mike. Yeah, like, yes, that is what we definitely want to avoid, particularly if you're pulling on the towel. All right, Mike, how you feeling? I'm sweating. Oh, I know, it's warm in here. We've got to get some AC. We're still in that age of <laughs> development here. So good, nice work. Okay, now we're going to talk about stretching the hip flexors, which almost everyone has tight hip flexors these days because we do so much sitting. And the key part is the pelvis. If the pelvis actually rotates forward like this, 
we are not getting the proper stretch. You want to keep that pelvis in that neutral position, and we're going to show you how to do it actually Well, you do the stretch. There's two options. Here's the first one. So if you are able to kneel and stretch your hip flexors, a lot of people will just go like this. Now, yes, I'm lunging. I'm feeling a little bit of a stretch just because my leg is back like this, but I'm not getting the proper stretch. My pelvis is tilted. My trunk is flexed forward. So what you want to do is look upright. This often fixes it. As you can see, my pelvis is straight up with my back. So now I'm getting a good hip flexor stretch. Here. And you, you feel that? I always say right where your yep. pocket is. Right here. That's where those muscles are. And you can tell the more you lean forward and kneel into it, you will feel more of a stretch. But don't lean forward and just flex over like this. You're not doing anything. So again, try to be nice and upright. So if you have bad knees or bad back, connect it on the floor. We're going to show you a version on the mat. Right. Or it can be done off the edge of your bed. Yes. So for this version, you'll need to sit on something tall, whether it is a dining room table, a bed. You want something firm so you don't slide off. Personally, I do this on my bed. I use a pad like this underneath my buttock, so it gives a little more stability to the edge of the bed. However, this is plenty firm, so I do not need it. So first, you're going to get on your back, and you're going to bring both knees to your chest and get a nice flat back. This should feel good. Then you're going to take one leg, bring it down off the edge of the table here, and bring this knee up towards your chest. Once you're in a good position, try to bend this knee as much as you can. Obviously, I am a little tight here, so that's as far as I can flex that knee, and I really start to feel a stretch there. If you're not holding this up, You'll drop down like this. You're not going to get as good of a stretch. So make sure to keep this knee up and stretch this thigh out. Let me point out a couple more things. So we are locking this. If you want to have a pillow so you can be more yes. comfortable, it's a good idea. But this leg, uh, and a lot of people that have a tight IT band, which is on the side of your leg, the knee will have a tendency to roll out this way. If that happens, simply get it in line. So we're in line with the body like this and drop and then let gravity do this, and then you will need to pull that foot under like that if you need more of a stretch on that hip flexor, the rectus femoris muscle. How are you feeling, Mike? I'm doing good. Hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Yep, and then you're going to bring both knees to chest and switch to the other side. Right. If this is easy for you to make it more challenging, just scoot your buttock closer to the edge of the bed, and it's going to stretch that hip flexor even more. And I want to add, when you do this, you're probably going to find one side is a little tighter than the other. That's very, very normal. Simply put a little more attention to the tight side so you get evened out from one side to the other. Very helpful. Well, that concludes the 10 exercises. Thank you, Dr. Christy Ennis, for helping. If you would like to check out her YouTube channel, we'll have it linked down below in the top comment section. She posts videos three days a week. Some are exercises you should and shouldn't do. Some are follow along. You can just go check out her channel, and thank you very much for helping us. And that's Dr. Christy Ennis with a K, right? With a K. Yeah, we want to get that spelling proper. You know how I am about that. <laughs> so very good. Enjoy the channel, and uh, look at our channel for more we've got got 4,000 plus videos out there. Make sure you get every one, and I want to have a report written down in each one. Just send it to me personally. I'll review. Thank you. Just FYI, Brad's grammar and spelling is not A plus material. It's not bad. It's getting better. <laughs> it's getting better all the time.